This week's Form First Preview coming up. Now Monday we have a checklist chuck it, uh, Form First. The workout was designed in pairs, so you'll see various tasks that are either similar, uh, where we're trying to see the difference between the two tasks, or two exercises that often get confused with one another. So um, each task you'll end up doing twice for sure, and some of them you'll do three times and four times, and you'll kind of see the format as you go through it. Uh, you get rid of some of the exercises the further you get along. Uh, the two exercises we want to focus on today are Yak and Mastodon. Um, I specifically chose these two because um, many people's, many times people do Yak when they're doing Mastodon, and I just want to show you the difference between the two. Now, Yak is a bulldog, bulldog hands and mogul feet but your feet should, uh, should never go in front of your hands and it's not either, it's not a Yeti either. So uh, slow, like kind of like a slow version of it, you're looking like this, hands should go straight forward and sideways. So it looks like this. Now um, we call it Yak because it's actually named after uh, a former member of St. Clair Shores. Um, his name is uh, Mike Yakimovic. Or Yakimovich, and uh, so he would always do this instead of, um, I don't know if it was Mastodon or Bulldog or what, so he would do this crawl, so we called it a yak. So if I'm going a little bit quicker, it looks like this. Okay, now if it's done incorrectly, you'll see the feet <coughs> go like that, <coughs> forward. Your feet shouldn't go too far forward because that'll get blended um, <clears throat> accidentally. It'll look like uh, kind of like a Yeti. So make sure your hands are going straight, feet side to side, the feet stay behind your hands. And the difference between that and Mastodon, <clears throat> Mastodon are bare hands. So we've got bare hands and bulldog hands. And your feet are going to still move side to side, but they move a little quicker, uh, more frequently, I would say, than your yak, and you have less weight on your lower body. Your, your body should be further in a plank position, and you're only progressing down the field by how, <clears throat> how quickly your hands are able to keep up. So your mastodon looks like this. Okay? So, the reason it's called Mastodon is because we have mogul feet. We use the letter M to kind of associate mogul feet, mogul push, uh, and then just we threw it in with uh, the crawl to make a crawl. Um, when you're doing moguls, make sure your body's kind of staying in a line when you crawl. Now, where, where the errors come in is people get going too fast. Like they're, they're, their hands want to go faster and they're bunching up their body and they're, they're, they're more crunched up and it turns into a yak when people get going too fast. So when they do mogul, sometimes they're looking like, and just because your hands are moving like a bull or a bear crawl, that's still not really a mastodon because you're not, you're not spread out and you're putting more weight on your legs and therefore you're taking all the weight off of your upper body momentarily. So I'm going to show you Mastodon correct. Mastodon correct. Lichen is probably your first introduction to, to crawling, um, at least laterally, in a way where your entire, up, your entire body should be supported by your upper body and lower body, and you're working on transferring the weight. So we're going to use this line. We'll say like this is the end zone over here, and this is like the field of play, if you will. What should be done is you're moving your hands over, over and across the line, and you move your upper body completely over the line, just like this. That's going to teach you how to do your monkeys and your mongoose and, and anything laterally, Amarok, Yeti, all that. But what's done very frequently is people are not clearing the line with both their hands and their feet, but they always also uh, kind of drag their hand, their one hand, um, a little bit later instead of simultaneously bringing it up all the way and over. 
okay? So it should look like that. What I'll see though, incorrectly, is kind of um, be like this. And it's kind of hard for me to duplicate it, but when I see it, it's, it's somebody is trying to still kind of have a little bit of weight on their upper body. And it's, it shouldn't be like that. It should be up and over, up and over. I'll show you how I do it when I'm kind of going full force. It looks like this. Okay? It's, uh, all of your upper body should be supported, so it should be supporting your uh, entire body's weight briefly. Same thing with the lower body, briefly. Now, um, the other thing we'll see is that it's, it's just this, which is just a mogul, or the hand's not going completely over, the feet aren't going completely over, it's like one hand to the line, it should be completely over the line. It may seem petty, but we really wanna see you crossing the line and being able to lift your entire upper body off the turf briefly and then back over. So that's lichen. A lichen is a wolf or a werewolf, I believe. No real reason why we haven't called that, but um, that's lichen. Diablo is my favorite task. That and boulder are probably my two favorite. Diablo used to be probably our hardest task when I first came up with Cyphus. Um, for a good year, I'd say it was our hardest task. Um, it was named Diablo because it was the hardest task. It was the devil. Everyone had like a, a love-hate relationship with it. Um, if you do Diablo correctly, you're gonna work on your flexibility greatly, especially in your hamstrings and glutes. And you're also, uh, you're gonna be using your upper body shoulders primarily. And uh, if you do it right, you're gonna improve things like your reverse bulldog, your uh, um, revival, that kind of stuff where you're moving backwards. And if you're doing it right, you're gonna feel it a lot in your quads, but I think that's also depending on how you do it. So I think of Emily, how she does it versus how I do it. There are two different ways to do it. There is one that's primarily legs, and there's one that's like upper body and then a little bit of legs, upper body and then a little bit of legs. And I use the, the, the last uh, explanation. I end up using my upper body quite a bit more. So what it is, is a reverse bulldog with the weight. So if we're gonna go this way, you pull back and sit down into it, okay? That's Diablo from the front. From the side, it's gonna look like this. Here, back, I sit down into it, see how my butt's down, go back, here. As a matter of fact, I should explain how that task came about. There was an old task we used to do called plate pulls. Now, back when I was coming up with Cyphus, we used all different types of contraptions. We used to use uh, agility ladders. We would use um, these like hexagon bars where you do deadlifts and we carry the weight and that's where dead man walking came from. And then we do something called plate pulls. You get a yoga mat, you throw the yoga mat down, you put weight on top of the mat and you pull the weight. So a Diablo was actually a plate pull with a yoga mat. So it took a while to figure out how to actually do a Diablo with just the plate, but that's, that's how we ended up doing it. And so there are two ways to do it. Like I said, Emily kind of does it one way. There's a few other people that do it very similar, where it's just quads almost. You don't go full, really, full range of motion with the upper body. It's just kind of like, it's like almost a continuous reverse, uh, like croaking almost. It's like jump, jump, jump. That's gonna get your quads along. Now the way I, I choose to do it is I try to do fewer of them and try to extend my reach as far as I can with my upper body. So I will go back as far as I can, pull and pull. I find that I get much more of a um, a stretch on that. I don't have as much of a burn on my quads, so I'm able to kind of keep continuing at a nice even pace. That's kind of preference. You can do either way if you want. Um, but I guess try them both out and see what works for you. Now, the way it's incorrectly done is not really in the actual process of doing it, because it's kind of hard to cheat, which I love about it. 
That's probably what I like the most about it. You really can't do it incorrectly. You can do it inefficiently by not going a full range of motion. But here's the real kicker and the one that kind of is my pet peeve is your, your legs are starting to you know feel it. You're getting tired. Um, you're not progressing down the field. You need to take a break. This is what we'll see. It'll be like this. And then the person wants a break and then they stand up and they hike it. Oh, well shoot, I get to go back two feet. Well, you kind of did a hike there, so you don't want to do that. So what you want to do, you're going to take a rest, stop, leave it where it is. If you want to walk around or if, you, or if you're going to stop and just kind of do whatever, that's fine. But then practice the art of continuance, meaning wherever you left it, go back to where you started, just like that. Waller's is probably in the top 10 of our, our, our difficulty tasks. Walrus is perfectly named because it looks like a walrus when you're moving and it's the only task where you actually have to have your hands flared out to the side. I saw one person doing it recently um, on their knuckles. I don't know how she did it but <laughs> it's the first time I've ever seen it done like that. Uh, walrus is really really going to get your uh, abs, midsection, obliques, and hip flexors um, and it's really important that you keep your midsection tight to do it correctly. So, now the way this looks, and I, I, I can almost guarantee you, if you have never done sight this, you, you haven't done a task like this or an exercise like this. Get in a nice plank position, and you're going to move your body weight like this. Okay? Now that's all the way down, you know, 60 feet down, 60 feet back. Very, very difficult to do. Okay, so I'll show you again here. Okay, now the errors or where you can go wrong with this is being kind of flimsy in your midsection and uh, it's hard to pull the weight like that. So you'll be doing yourself a disservice if you're not really strong throughout. Or if you're sagging too low, that's not good for your back. And if you're arching or bending, it, you're not gonna be able to pull it very well. So again, it's another one that's kind of tough to cheat. Continuance is another thing that we were just talking about with Diablo. So let's say you're going down the field, you need a break, you go to your knees, you rest a bit, all right, you're gonna start again. Well, you shouldn't do that little pull that I just did, and you shouldn't um, start pulling from the knees, meaning you shouldn't start like this, okay? You should start where you stopped. All right, you had to go to your knees and do your reps or whatever. Okay, go back up here, start again. Yeah. Now, since it's the plated task, you should finish when the plate gets to the line. So let's say this is line number four. I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. I'm not, now I'm done. Okay, stay in a full plank. Don't do an inchworm to finish the task. So you got here, okay, I'm done now, and now I'm gonna do an inchworm to finish it. Fully pull yourself in the plank position all the way until you're done. And uh, same thing with the start, make sure the plate's on the line, you start in a plank position, don't start with an inch more. Um, that is walrus, that's tough. Hikes everyone seems to like. So hikes got the name one of our very first tasks because it looks like you're hiking a football but you're hiking the plate. Uh, you learn this on day one, hands are always in the top part of the plate, just like this, and you're just throwing it, not throwing it, sliding it through your legs. Now, the pros are taught to teach initiation and hikes the most basic way. That means a nice good squat down, hands on top, throw it through your legs. Now, the more you do cyclists, you know that there's a much more efficient way and I guess a more fun way to do hikes, and that's the Diablo technique. So you just learned how to do Diablo two uh, segments ago. <clears throat> You're gonna use that initial movement of pulling back with like a reverse bulldog movement, but transition all that weight to the hike. Okay, so let me show you how that works. Start with your hands on top of the plate and use your flexibility for, uh, for like the best you can here, which means the further that you can have your feet in front of the plate and still support your upper body, the better because you're gonna be able to cover more ground and build up a little bit more momentum, more momentum on the throw. So I like to start way up here, come back, 
and throw into it. You should be able to hike it at least line to line if you're doing that movement. Um, but this, this task is not that difficult. I'm not really here to, to highlight the ways that you can do it incorrectly. There's not many. There's grabbing it by this way and throwing it down like a, like a Toro throw. And there's, I guess, there's also like not really bending over and just kind of doing that. Um, what I want to highlight is how to get more out of it. So if you're starting here and just going back, you're going to get some. But you really want to try to get up as far up as front, in front of it as you can, transition the weight into the hike. Let's talk about grip a little bit. When I do it, I pretty much have my fingers on top. And I first, I first start with my thumbs kind of like in it to make sure I have like enough of a grip. But as I'm pulling it back, I don't know if you can see this, as I'm pulling it back, I actually bring my thumbs up and just kind of like claw it back. Okay, so if you can see, I go like this, and then as I'm throwing it, I go like that and throw it through. Um, some, some movements that are wasted I'll see is this, especially if you're kind of new. There'll be this movement there, like throwing it forward and back. That's just gonna take up a little bit more time. Um, this frontward movement is not really efficient. Uh, and then the other thing sometimes I'll see is a double like pump with the legs. I'm gonna see if I can duplicate it. It's kind of like it's kind of like this. That. It's like you 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 lose your power if you do that. You want to go all into one movement. Um, and sometimes if I'm trying to get a little bit more on it, like if I know that I'm close to hiking in two, what I'll, I'll do is I'll, I'll kind of like fall back with it. So let's see if I can try that out too. Kind of go. I don't know if you saw that, but it was kind of like a little bit of using my momentum backwards. Um, so that's hikes. That's like, that's like 101 cyclists. Um, but I wouldn't suggest really doing that hike, Diablo hike maneuver. Until you at least get the basics of hikes down after a couple days, um, but that's 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 like such a staple of cyclist training. You, you got to know what it is and just try to make most of it. Play a game with yourself. See if you can hike it line to line, and then eventually hike it in two. Caffeinator. Caffeinator is called uh, it because you're using your calves to push the weight, and really <clears throat> you should only be using your calves, not your quads, so much. So all it is is a plate push. We're pretty much in this position, like a almost a plank. There's going to be a little bit of upward movement. And you can push up and forward. But my legs, my knees are pretty much locked. There's got to be a little bit of give there. It can't be completely locked or else it's probably not going to be very good for your knees. So there's a little bit of give there. But really what it is, it's like toes in a plate push position. So it should be just like that. Push. And I'm not exaggerating my speed. That's about as far and as fast as I go in my caffeinator. So if you were to count how many times you do like toes or the push off, I would say you're probably hitting 15 per line. You're doing probably about 45. Now where it's done incorrectly or misinterpreted is this. I don't know if you see that, but where, where that power is coming from is my quads. A little bit my calves, but that's more like doing frogs or, or hang, like the last part of hang, where you're trying to get as much as you can out of it. That task is all about staying in the muck of the moment and actually feeling your calves, like just doing the work, isolating that, that soleus, that, that area of your calves that's doing most of the work. Um, if you're doing it right, like I said, I would say probably somewhere between at least 30, if not 45, reps for each push. So that's caffeinator, that's but grifter and then the, the dreaded single leg inch. Grifter is um, technically it's a bird dog if you're familiar with that like prehab exercise. Um, we're going to be on our elbows. We have something called griffin and grifter. I believe grifter is the name of like a claw and a, a, the griffin is like a um, half bird half lion type thing. So grifter, I was thinking of a claw, like you're clawing back the weight. Okay, so you're gonna be on your elbow in the end zone. Your opposite hand is gonna be on the hole or in the hole. It shouldn't really be here like a Toro on the end. It should be on the hole. 
Okay, elbow here. What you're gonna do is bring opposite foot or opposite knee to opposite elbow or, or to the plate. Okay. A lot of core, a lot of hips, a lot of lats. Okay. The nuances on this, you wanna reach far, as far as you can above your head and keep your hip and leg and torso and everything square to the turf. I'm shaking right now trying to show this to you. Okay. Back, full extension up as high as you can, full back with the foot and the toe and the leg, just like this. The airs come when people open up their hip and they're not going full range and they're not getting far up. They're not getting that full stretch in, in the lats and pulling back. I understand that sometimes it's hard upper body wise, shoulder wise to get that plate above your head. Do the best you can to get up and above because sometimes it'll look like this. It'll be kind of like... And then also really uh, pay attention to keeping your hips square and flat to the floor. The way to get it down to the other end zone is a single arm plate push, kind of like the bandit. So you're like this, pushing it down, trying to you know open your body up too much. And then you'll switch hands, switch elbows, opposite elbow to opposite knee. Uh, that's grifter. All right, single leg inchworm is the last one we're gonna show you. It's probably across the board the hardest task that we have. Um, you know, some people are going to be stronger upper body and core wise and maybe have more more experience with sightless and single leg inchworm may not be all that difficult uh, for, for someone who's a little bit more advanced in sightless training. But I would say, hands down, the one task that people say they have the hardest time with is going to be your single leg inchworm. So, what it is, is our traditional inchworm done with one leg. And that's why it's called single leg inchworm. You're gonna put your toe on the front lip of the plate. You're gonna be here. You're gonna crawl out, bring your knee to your chest. Okay, or up toward your chest. Or just like that. Same rules uh, apply with a single leg inchworm as it would with a regular inchworm. Knees should not touch the floor, should not touch the turf. Okay, so you don't wanna do this. And then come down and then pull up. The reason why we don't allow knees on, the, on any inchworm is because you're going to be cutting the plank short. If you go to your knees and you turn it into something like this, well then you're completely deactivating your core, you're not using your hips, you're not stabilizing. We want to make sure that you're crawling all the way out to a plank, pull up, use your hips, use your uh, core, your abs, all that. Um, so no knees. If you're going to rest, you rest like this or stand up. Um, and then just like a regular inchworm, make sure you're not pouncing out. So you want to crawl out, you don't want to pounce out. What will help you if you're kind of new or you're having a difficulty doing this uh, single leg inchworm, don't pause. Don't pause when you come out. Okay, if you pause and then try to pull it, it's going to be harder to pull. Use the momentum without like yanking it forward, but use the, the, the crawling forward action to seamlessly pull, pull. The other thing that's gonna help you, shoes. I always go back, you want a nice stiff sole to help you pull the weight. And then um, another thing you wanna pay attention to that you're not uh, doing, you wanna make sure you don't do this, is don't use your off foot to help pull so don't rest it in the back like this, or even don't even have your quads, your, your legs touch, because if your pro is really paying attention to your form, they'll notice when you do something like this. Because what you're doing is just creating another point of, of uh, stability and, and kind of cheating your way to help pull that weight up. Really what should be done is, this off foot leg is completely, completely independent. Move to the side like this. Okay, if I'm coming at you, looks like this. I'll try my other leg here, crawling out. Leave no room for misinterpretation to your pro. You should be like, hey, look at this leg's out of the picture. I'm just using my one leg. Okay, that single leg inchworm. Also exaggerate, I would say one more thing, exaggerate 
when this foot's in the air, okay? It's like this. Don't start like this where you're crawling, my foot's still down, and then you lift up. Exaggerate, show your pro, show your other, you know, comrades on the plate, not on the turf, that I'm lifting this foot up, I'm crawling and I'm pulling. I'm crawling and I'm pulling. You're not keeping this foot on the turf, crawling, and then I'm gonna pull. Okay, try to show that you're really doing one leg. That'll show you and the people around you that you're doing single leg inchworm as, as hard as you can possibly do it and you're doing it with the right form. That's single leg inchworm and have fun with that.